Hello everyone and welcome inside the Lorain County Community College Studios. My name is Ron Yance and welcome today to Conversations with Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. Today and in many other programs we'll sit down with our Congresswoman and we'll talk about the issues that affect not only Lorain County but our region and our state of Ohio and how they affect you personally at home, your friends, your neighbors, your family members and Hopefully you get lots of good information and, 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 and learn a lot about what's going on in our state and in our region. Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur is sitting, seated, or seated to my right, and then we have four, three students from Lorain County Community College, and then a member of our college staff here, and I'd like to introduce them all. Kiana McIntosh is a student here at the college. Next to Kiana is Lewis Schneider. Lewis is also a student. Myrna Berrios, a student here at Lorain County Community College, and then Nadia Leary at the end of the uh, row here of seats. She's a marketing recruitment specialist, and Nadia deals with students all across the county. So all very uh, informed people, people right in the middle of uh, everything that's going on with uh, students today. Specifically, the conversation today, Congresswoman Kaptur, is going to be around student debt, student loans, how things have changed over the last six years, and how it affects the people in our county and in our region. So first of all, welcome, and thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Ron. It's a great pleasure to be here uh, with you and with these wonderful, wonderful citizens who are building our future as a region and as a country. Marcy, if I could just send out some facts and figures to get the conversation rolling, and then that's really what we want this to be, a conversation with you and uh, the people that are affected by the topics that we discuss every time we have conversations with you. So a new report finds that student loan today in, in the summer of 2013 in America now exceeds $1 trillion. Now that, that is more money than is in debt with credit cards right now. That's never happened in the history of our country. Six years ago, Congress passed a College Cost Reduction and Access Act to help keep the lid on interest rates, to help keep the lid on student loans. It cut the interest rates of Stafford loans from 6.8% to 3.4%. Now that program stopped this July in the summer of 2013. The proposal that is out there now is to double that, is to flip it, to go from 3.4 back to 6.8, doubling the student loan debt or, or rate of debt for our students that are, that are so helped by student loans. Now, the provision helped erase financial burden of students and their families years ago. Doubling that rate would obviously burden millions of students. Congress and the Obama administration has raised the maximum Pell Grant award to over $5,000 for the upcoming academic year. That's a little less than $1,000 increase since 2008. The number of Pell Grant recipients has been up 50% over the last five years, providing access to education for millions of additional low-income and middle-class Americans. So there's a proposal out there right now, Congresswoman Kaptur, that would really put a burden on students, correct? Correct. And yes. how, how is that going to, how do you feel about that, and how do you feel that will affect uh, families in our region? Well, uh, what's happening is that the act that we passed in 2007 that allowed interest rates to go from 6.8 to 3.4 percent expired as of July 1st, this month. Right. And we've tried to uh, renew it, and we have been summarily turned back in the House of Representatives. So there's a fight happening right now in the Congress uh, regarding at what level the interest rate should be set. And we are hoping that the uh, Republican majority in the House will bring up uh, the bill so that we can actually have a vote on it. Um, and um, uh, they have essentially allowed it to expire and that meant that the higher rate locked in. And what does that mean for the average student? Uh, what it means is that um, if they have a loan, and most students do. Um, Raise your hand if you have a loon or a grant. Everybody uh, on our, in, I Myrna, not uh, did. I did too as a student. Right. Uh, it means that um, you will pay a much higher rate. And one of the other things we did earlier uh, in the last decade was to take the uh, student loan program away from the private banks and put it back inside the federal government so we could have lower uh, interest rates because they were making, uh, as with credit cards, students are a very um, attractive subset of American society. And uh, there were private interests that wanted to make a whole lot more money off of your debt. And um, we said, no, we want to move it back. We'll have a lower uh, administrative cost. We're not going to put any profit, take no profit away from students, just manage the loan program. Now, those that want to give it away to the private sector also um, are trying to raise 
the interest rate that our students have to pay. Marcy, why don't we go down the line and have each student identify how they're connected to a student loan or a Pell Grant and, and, and how it makes a difference in their life in their pursuit of getting a higher education. We'll start with Kiana. Certainly. Um, I do receive student loans and um, it, without them I would not be able to obtain my degree. Um, I also am a single mother of three um, and they are a long coming for their education after high school. So all of this plays a big, um, a big role in the future of my family. Um, so it's a bit scary. Lewis? Uh, for me, uh, I was lucky and I got a, a grant and also a small uh, scholarship. And uh, it was not because of grades and stuff, but I, uh, I need, you know, help of money and the school was able to give those to me. And because of those, I'm still in school. I, I would have not been in school if it wasn't for those. And, you know, I wouldn't be bettering myself at that point, you know. So, I mean, it, it helped me, you know, say like, you know, hey, I can still go in school and, you know, now I've been taking summer classes and everything and I mean, it, it's helping me pursue my goal. Myrna, your situation. Yeah. I am the grant right now and that helped me to get back uh, to a school. And I, I feel lucky to get that because without the grant, I can't come back to finish my degree. Nadia, percentage-wise, you know, marketing and recruitment specialist dealing specifically with students in our county, how many students are in need with, for a grants, uh, uh, loans? How big is it? I can't give you the specific numbers. I can tell you in almost every conversation I have with a student or a parent or a family that that is one of the number one concerns. First is what kind of education can I get? Do you have my program? And second, what kind of financial aid can you offer? What scholarships do you have? What is, what is the loan policy? Um, loans, grants, scholarships are a, a fact of life for our students here and, and, and something necessary for them to continue on. Marcy, I'm interested in, in, in two specific things built off that. First of all, why in the world that we live in today, specifically in the state of Ohio, in, in the economy that it is today, where we have students who are graduating from college and not being able to find jobs, why would, why would a program want to double their mm -hmm. loan debt when they're graduating already in debt and then they're going into a job environment, an economic environment where they can't find jobs right away. So, you know, we're setting up our future to fail in, in, in the minds of many. So why even propose 3.4 to 6.9? Why make it harder for our graduates to succeed? It shouldn't be harder, Ron. It should be affordable uh, for our students. But as I mentioned, there is this philosophy that everything can be privatized. Just take the post office and just cast it away. Uh, uh, take uh, our national parks, sell them off. Uh, and there's a view that, oh, well, students, um, let them pay uh, whatever the banks want to charge them. And it's a huge political fight. It's reality in America today and the politics at the national level. And I want to compliment uh, the students who are with us today for having the gumption to compete in your classroom, to enroll in a college, and to begin advanced education. I can tell you from our family, um, our father never received an education beyond the eighth grade. Uh, he worked, he was so talented, and he worked so hard his whole life, but he died at age 66 from sheer hard work. And our mother um, did not receive her high school equivalency until after she went on Social Security. And I compliment you for giving your children, Kiana, a great example. Our mother um, was highly literate, but she didn't have her degree. And her life was so hard. So I identify, I'm the first person in our family to go to college. Uh, and actually, the first one to graduate from high school, my brother then did after me. But um, I look at our whole family. And with education comes so much opportunity. The world opens up to you. And even though our economy is still coming out of a deep recession, uh, because of what the very large banks did with irresponsible and imprudent behavior, okay, they hurt everyone in our country. Um, I know that these young people will have a brighter future and their children 
will have a brighter future because of the education they are receiving. It is an, the most important investment any family can make in their child is to give them a good education. Today, the average college graduate will, will graduate $26,000 in debt. That's just the average. Some of them $60,000 in debt, some of them less than that, but that's the reality. Uh, Kiana, when you graduate, what do you want to pursue as a career? Uh, actually, I like to stay right here at LCCC. I found it to be my home. Um, but I want to do something that uplifts the community, the people that I get involved your with. Your degree will be in? My degree will be in business administration management. Lewis, for you, your degree will be in, and what is your goal in life job-wise? Uh, I actually want to be uh, an actor. And uh, I actually take a class in the studio that we're in right now. and. Uh, it's also opened me up to where I just I love filming and just I know that that's the field I want to get into and it's because of the school that I know it's not maybe just acting but just the filming industry. And Myrna for you? Uh, my degree will be in accounting and finance management. And will you be going through the university partnership for that degree? Yes. At Lorain County Community College yes. we have a university partnership with eight is it now Nadia? colleges and universities in the state of Ohio? Twelve over, colleges 12, with over 40 different bachelor's and master's degrees. 40 different bachelor and master's yep. degree programs and Myrna's University of Akron's accounting program? Hiram and College. Hiram College's mm -hmm. accounting program. So uh, she's a great example of what LCC offers all the way through. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reason I'm pointing that stuff out, can you imagine yourselves graduating $26,000 in debt, nation average, and not being able to find a job in accounting, not being able to find a job in business management, and not being able to find a job in, in acting in any way. So then suddenly, where do they turn, Marcy? What happens next? Well, uh, in terms of their loan. Um, what if they can't pay the loan? Well, there is a um, grace period. And uh, many students, uh, I've found, go on for additional education if they can't find work. But I think it's incumbent upon educational institutions to work with students so they can find internships and placements during their educational, the time that they're in school. And uh, I was just over at GraphTech, for example, and they can't find uh, engineers. And um, I'm calling the engineering schools in the region and saying, could you set up internship programs with GraphTech? Because um, we have many companies, uh, in fact, I don't know the number for Lorraine County, but for Cuyahoga County, they have thousands of jobs, a couple thousand jobs, for which they cannot find people who are qualified. So we are not educating to what the marketplace needs right now. So I think that the schools in Lorraine County Community College has been wonderful, I think, at helping students to um, find real employment uh, once they graduate. Nadia, to, could you add to the Congresswoman's comments and how, how we are affecting students? Absolutely, and well in a couple of different ways. First, our Employment Career Services Office has worked very hard to develop an online database of all sorts of internship opportunities. Um, they're doing a lot more activity on campus to really ensure that all students have at least one internship during their time with us. Um, we find that students that have the internship are much more likely to be employed afterwards and oftentimes with the company. Um, in terms of addressing the needs of the community and, and for specific majors, our university partnership is a wonderful example of that. Um, specifically, our computer science and engineering program with Toledo um, looked to do just that. We knew that there was a dearth of engineering engineers in the county in the area, and um, we've worked really hard to increase enrollment and, and provide those local companies with the talent um, to be able to continue to be uh, tops in the region. You know, I just might mention also, um, I believe it's Delta Airlines is going to be um, hiring pilots and we have a major air control center here in Lorain County. In uh, many, many of our students don't even think about flight uh, as a career uh, or the mechanics of flight. And uh, we are, uh, and the position of air controller. Uh, at the national level, we're going to be having many retirements in those fields. So partnership programs that would help take some of this wonderful talent from Lorain County and move them into those fields, I think also just, I'm just saying what I know is available, the railroad industry, huge amount of hiring in the railroad industry. People don't think about the railroad industry, uh, but there's another uh, field of endeavor where Lorain County Community College can link students to the jobs of the future. 
We're going to take a short time out. When we come back, we're going to talk more with our students, and we're going to talk specifically about how an educated workforce is critical for our America's economy, and then, and then secondly, how education levels affect income level as well, and if those opportunities are out there for our graduates as we move forward. So we'll be back with Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur and conversations from Lorain County Community College after this break. Welcome back to Conversations with Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. Marcy had told us in the first segment that she was the first person in her family not only to go to college but to graduate from high school. So I thought it would be fitting and, and, and give us a chance to, to learn a little bit more about our students that are here today to have each of them tell us their personal story, why they're here at Lorain County Community College in the first place, and what the road was that led them to our institution. Um, Myrna, why don't we start with you? Okay. Um, I came back um, to college, like, I didn't be out of college like 10 years out of college. I started my college when I get out of high school, but I had to uh, stop going to um, college to take care of my kids. I got three kids. And last year I decided to come back uh, to the college because my oldest kids, my daughter, she's going to college next year. And I think that it's going to be good, not just telling them that you have to go to college and get an education. Um, I have to um, be an example for them, not just telling them what uh, they have to do. So I decided to come back to the college, and I found the LCCC um, get a great opportunity to me to um, get my degree and be an example for my kid at the same time. Lewis, your story. Um, well, I never did good in high school or anything like that, you know. So I went straight into the work field. And I worked at a, a place, I mean, that was a hard labor place. And I went there for about a year. And finally, I was like, you know, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And so I went and did an audition for this other school. And they said my GPA wasn't good enough from high school. so. I decided, okay, I'll go to my local school, get my GPA build up. And uh, some things happened in uh, the fall, and uh, I was forced to withdraw my classes. But uh, the, the, the staff at LC is probably the most incredible group of people I've ever experienced because they are why I'm here still. You know, I, w I was really close to just giving up, but they, they, they made, they, they've really just said, no, you know, we're here for you. You know, we're going to help you no matter what. You're not, you're not, you know, quitting school. And now, you know, I'm just so grateful that I, the people that are here who have helped me, they've been like guardian angels to me. So. Kiana. Uh, I initially, I worked in corporate America. And um, my story is a lot like Miss Marina. Um, where I'm, I'm here to set an example for my kids. Uh, again, worked in corporate America, became a displaced worker. Um, so you had a college degree? I did. But? I did. Um, but that was not, um, everything was saturated at that time. Everybody that was with that huge recession and everyone was looking for work. So what would set me out above the rest? And that was to come back to school, to make myself more marketable, um, to enter into the university pro partnership, um, I really don't know what I would do without it. Uh, through that journey, I've learned a lot. Um, I've gained a number of different passions. I um, also um, agree with Lewis. Um, this is a remarkable place, and um, I see it uplift so many people on a, a number of different um, levels. Um, I thank God for it. Um, and I, I plan to continue to be an example to my family to my peers, um, and to all the people around me, even to um, persons like this lovely lady, congressman, woman. Um, we want to be the next leaders. Um, whether we are traditional or non-traditional students, it is imperative that we set the right examples in the little town that not too many people know about. So the questions to, to Nadia and Marcy now. You know, these stories that you heard here, the three 
are not unfamiliar, I know to you, Nadia, dealing with the students here at our college, and, and Marcy, I'm certain, are not unfamiliar to you being a congresswoman in our, in our region. So how do, how do you, as a congresswoman, help make sure there are the right pathways for students to not only go to college, but then graduate from college and find jobs? And then how do you, Nadia, as a, as a representative of the college who works with students directly, make sure that, that they can get here, and while they're here, that they're introduced to all the services that can help them down the road? So those are the two questions I pose to both of you. And, and Congresswoman Kaptur, if you would like to start, then Nadia can follow up. Okay, well, first of all, identifying with their struggle uh, through my own family, my job in Congress is to fight for them and to fight for citizens like them against those forces of darkness that would want to take us back uh, and that would want America to stall and not to be able to invest in our future, the future of our people, and to give everyone a chance. Uh, it's not an easy fight at the national level. Every day is a fight on everything, it seems, and uh, education and our ability to invest in education um, is uh, often a topic of debate uh, in the Congress. When I was younger and in college, it didn't seem so much of a fight. It was kind of a, um, uh, accepted that you would educate the next generation. Now we're into all these debates about who should educate, how much it should cost. It didn't used to be that hard. And so Lorain County Community College here is really a beacon. As I represented the county from the very first days, I saw it as a place where people just flocked. They love to come here. Just as Kiana says, it, it uplifts you, it, uh, it helps you. Uh, every student here has talked about that. And it plays such a vital role uh, in this county. So my job is to fight for them and for others like them and really fight for America's future and the future of education so that it's affordable and available to all. My job specifically takes me into high schools, takes me into classrooms at the college to let students know about our wonderful programs, both at the associate degree level through the partnership. Um, not only that, we are working more and more with younger students, with middle school students, to just spread the message about education in general, how important it is to get students excited about going on to college, to raise kids, put that expectation in their mind from the time that they're 11 and 12, that college is a path, that they can um, start doing things as fifth and sixth graders to help prepare them for college to get them excited. So we're, our outreach has really exploded um, beyond the typical you know, high school outreach um, that you would think of for the college and just spreading the, the message of education. All right, I'll play devil's advocate here for a second. Uh, my notes say there's a clear correlation between education levels and income levels. A highly skilled, highly educated workforce is critical to America's economic competitiveness. Is that true, or is that just a marketing line to help sell college education? Oh, no. It's borne out in people's earnings over their lifetime. I don't have the statistics with me, but more education equals more opportunity and more income. And I always say to people, do what you love. Every door will open to you. Um, whatever that field is, so long as you're happy, and education means to draw forth, to draw forth from you whatever it is you are meant to be and to do. And the great thing about being at Lorraine County Community College is it gives you that moment in life where you can really think about your gifts, what they are, how to polish them, how to take them forward, and you will learn your whole life. Every day for me is a college education in my work. I never stop learning, I never stop reading, I never, the only thing I need help on is polishing up my computer skills uh, because that wasn't taught when I was in school, okay? But other than that, I mean, every day is learning, reading, uh, learning, keeping your mind active and you learn those skills here at college and obviously Lorraine County Community College provides you a pathway if you want to go on to a four-year degree and beyond. What a wonderful uh, effort uh, has been made here to link to learning around the world. Nadia? I do notice yeah. that. Um, for, uh, for students who earn a bachelor's degree, they will earn about a million dollars more over the course of their lifetime just by virtue of earning the bachelor's degree over someone who has not earned their 
bachelor's degree. So we tell students all the time, especially the seventh and eighth graders, that yes, college, college is an investment. It's an investment of your time. There will be papers and quizzes and tests, and, and there will be some student loans um, and hopefully some scholarships too. But over the course of your lifetime with a college degree, the opportunities for employment, for higher salaries, for opportunities only increase um, with the education. Is that why all three of you chose to, I know we've learned the reasons why you chose to come to college, but is one of them because you saw an economic advantage for yourself once you graduated? I mean, you probably all have had jobs, we've all had jobs as we've worked through college out of high school that we could have just kept and kept moving along. But, but why go the extra yard? Again, playing a devil's advocate. I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you guys. Myrna, why? Why put yourself through? You have three children. It's got to be hard to come yeah. to school. It's not easy. Um, there are days yeah. when things happen in your family that I'm sure draw you away from college, but you've, oh, yeah. you've driven through that. And, and So why? Well, Now I've got about three minutes. Okay. So. When I get out of high school, I, I take a degree in emer medical emergency. But I had to stop that, so I take care of my kid. And then I start working as in, with an agency employment. So um, in this year, I, I see me like changing career and changing career over and over. And the pay is not too good so to take care of a family. So I, I came back to college and I said, no, I have to get my degree. I have to get something that helped me to take care of my family and, and be successful in You life. want to get off the merry-go-round, yeah. so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Is that the same situation for, Kiana, you, you were a professional, so to mm -hmm. speak, you know, graduated from college, mm -hmm. was working in a corporate environment, was yes, displaced, sir. which most of yes. Ohio can relate to. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a fine example of what could happen. Mm -hmm. um, so nothing in this world is promised. And it's, it's important for anyone to uh, empower themselves with as much as they possibly can. Um, and that, you know, in this uh, life is school. Mm -hmm. is those, are those degrees, is that knowledge, those, the, the certificate as well as the soft skills, it's important, it's imperative. Now we've got little time left and this 30 minutes has gone by very quickly, uh, Congresswoman Kaptur. Uh, but there's one other thing that I wanna talk about at the time of this taping, and this show will, will play throughout the summer, but at the time of this taping, we are facing a week where the Senate, the House will take up to the Senate a bill this week. Is that still on target this week where they're going to they're gonna try to bring that down to 4%, the student loan rates back to 4% for undergra undergraduates? I hope so. Uh, the schedule has been very um, unpredictable, but I'm hoping that we will be able to move this very important legislation uh, for those who seek to better themselves and uh, use the federal programs for education that are available. I hope so. They've been delaying it since July 1st. And I hope that our students will contact their senators, uh, Senator Brown, uh, Senator Portman, and their representatives uh, from Ohio uh, to the Congress of the United States and let them know how important it is to them. This is not something that should be fiddled around with and delayed. Great. Thank you, Congresswoman Kaptur. Nadia Liria, Nadi, Nadia Leary, any Liria, uh, recruitment specialist here at the college, Myrna, Lewis, Kiana, students here at Lorain County Community College, thank you very much. This was Conversations with Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. We thank you for joining us and we hope that you enjoyed the show, learned something, and look forward to further conversations. Have a great day.